All right, now that we're talking about the dermis, we're going to talk about one of the major things that dermis makes, which is hair. So hair is called peely. A single hair is a peelus. Um, there are three types of hair that you have throughout your body. Lanugo is a kind of fine downy hair, usually without pigment or, or clear, you know, blonde hair, um, that is on fetuses and sometimes babies after they're born. A lot of babies are born with a layer of lanugo. They come out looking really hairy. And then within about a week, they shed that hair um, and they go back to having that, they go to having that soft, smooth baby skin. Nothing to worry about. It's a perfectly normal part of development. Velus is the term for the hair that you have on most of your body. The hair on your arms, chest, uh, back, legs, though that's velus or velus. Veli would be many hairs. And then the hair on your head, your eyebrows, your eyelashes, beard, pubic re regions, that is terminal hair. And you can do cool things with it, like make awesome braids like this. It tends to grow much, much longer than the other hair. Um, it does tend to be thicker and coarser on most people. Now, hair has a bunch of functions. Primarily, it's protective, especially on your scalp. Uh, protects your scalp from sunburn and injury. The skin on your scalp is actually very thin, and the blood vessels are very close under the skin. And so um, being able to uh, have a layer of hair for protection very useful. Also, um, hair at the openings to your eyes, your ears, and your nose protect those openings from particles getting in from dust and things like that. Hair is also really useful for retaining heat in your body and people who don't have body hair say that they do get cold faster. It's really important in sensory perception because hairs can be moved. Um, they help us to sense when things are moving near us or on us um, and things like wind we feel when it moves our hair. It also helps us visually identify each other um, and other people and it's really useful as a chemical signal disperser especially the hair in the armpits and the groin area uh, which uh, can build up odors and then project those odors into the world. I know, go away. Uh, that's gross. Okay. All right, so the hair structure, the bottom bulbous part of this hair is called the hair bulb. And that's where the hair grows from. And you can see that it's many, many different layers in here. You don't have to know them all. What you do have to know is that there is a layer in the very center called a hair papilla. And what does papilla mean? It means nipple shaped. There's the little nipple in here um, of connective tissues, lots of blood vessels, by the, lots of nerves. If you've ever had your hair pulled out by the root and uh, it actually like uh, came out with a little thing on the end, you may have actually gotten it pulled out all the way by the hair bulb. The area around the hair bulb is a cellular area called the matrix which actually produces the keratin, which is what hair is made of. The bulb is this bulbous part at the bottom, and then the next part of the hair as it grows toward the surface of the skin is called the root. And then after it emerges from the, from the skin, it's called the shaft. Okay, so three parts of the hair, the bulb, the root, and the shaft. The follicle is a cellular layer that surrounds the root and the hair bulb and supports the hair as it's growing. It's actually made of uh, a layer of connective tissue from the dermis and a layer of epithelial tissue that's an extension of the stratum basale and a little bit of the stratum spinosum. So all the three layers are part of this hair follicle. And again, if you've ever had a hair pulled out and it, there was like stuff on the bottom of it, um, you probably got this hair follicle. Now, your hairs can stand up straight, like when you get goosebumps, that's your hair standing up. And that's because every single hair has a little muscle attached to it, or at least all the hairs that can stand up, like the hairs on your arms, your legs, and your head. Uh, and this is called an erector pili muscle. Remember, pili means hair. Erector means to stand up. So this is a hair that makes, this is a muscle that makes, excuse me, makes the hair stand up. 
cool, right? So it's this tiny little muscle here that connects the root of the hair to one of the epidermal ridges, okay? And so when that muscle contracts, the root of the hair stands erect. Now, this is what a hair bulb looks like on a microscope slide. And they've used different stains so that we can see the different tissue layers and different colors. But you can see really clearly, uh, we've got this hair papilla here, and then surrounding it, different shaped cells. That's the matrix. And then um, the cuticle is actually a hard layer that protects the hair. And then we've got the layers of the follicle out here. Okay. I just want you to recognize that this is a hair bulb. Okay. If you see this on a microscope slide, if you see a slide like this on a test, I need you to know that that's a hair bulb and the center part is called the papilla. Okay, so that's hair. Up next, we're gonna talk about the three different kinds of glands that we find in the skin. 